Shalom. Call Halayim La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and teaching rule well. <clears throat> and peace, love, and blessings to the whole elect of the nation of Israel. I'm the brother Yaqal from Prophets in Babylon, Sarasota, which is a branch of the Prophets in Babylon Temple Church. Shalom to those brothers and today to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. I'm back with Lord willing. And edifying, let's defeat the sheep who believe on those names of truth and necessity. Shalom to you and your families. And now this is going to be a quick hit. Um, This is the book of Sarak, chapter 2, <clears throat> in the GNT. And the heading of this chapter is called Faithfulness to Yahweh Bashem al Shai. My child, if you are going to serve the Lord, be prepared for times when you will be put to the test. All right? My child, if you are going to serve the Lord, be prepared for times when you will be put to the test. And that's right, man. This truth, you know, we must all establish our hearts. All right. And, and, and prepare to be put to the test by Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. You know, because this truth, man, you're going to. Uh, the Lord has to constantly test us. You know. Because when you get tested and a test isn't, it's, you don't, don't think of a test as a bad thing. Think of a test as something good because when the Lord tests you, all right, he's seeing where you're at, you know, and where did you grow from the last situation that you have been put in. All right. So you have to prepare to be constantly tested by Yahweh by Shema Shai, you know. And thinking not strange when these tests come upon you. And I want to grab something quick. Uh, something to hit my spirit. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. You know, it reads, uh, Wherefore, girl, the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right. So it says, <clears throat> it says, girl, the loins of your mind. All right, so you have to gird up the loins of your mind and understand that these things are being brought upon you by none other than Yahweh by Shema and Shah, man. All right. So it says, um, be prepared for times when you will be put to the test. Be sincere and determined. Keep calm when trouble comes. You know, when trouble comes your way, you know, mishaps, you know, misfortunes, you know, different things comes your way. All right. It says, be calm. When trouble comes, you know, don't get riled up through the spirit. You know, don't, don't, you know, blow things out of proportion. You must be calm and, and collective when, you know, things are coming your way. All right. It says, uh, and understanding that first and foremost, when you get put in these situations, first thing you must consider is who put you there. All right. Because they, you know, how about Shema or Shai, you know, is in control of all things. So when these uh, certain things happen to you or come your way, you must first and foremost meditate on, okay, okay, the Lord put me in this position, you know, so it's all right. So you already have to be in the mentality of, okay, it's a test, you know, how do I react? And the Lord uh, wants us to react <clears throat> according to the precept, according to the guideline he gave us, all right, because when you consider a test, you know, you're not just throwing a test, no, you, you're, because your teacher has been telling you to study this and study that and, you know, read this, read that, you know, and then when these tests are thrown your way, it's ultimately from Yahweh Bashem Al Shai to see how you will react, you know, through what you have been studying, through what you have been learning. All right. <clears throat> That's why scripture says things were written before time was written for our learning. We see when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, he didn't move with haste. You know, he didn't move with the spirit of haste and try to justify himself saying, oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. You know, we, we seen that the Lord ultimately <clears throat> put him in that position to suffer it out. All right. And that and will ultimately be a testimony of his faith for us today. Likewise, we're going to go through certain things. We're going to go through certain moments in our walk where it's like <clears throat> the Lord just has us sitting there and suffering it, man. Okay. And that's perfectly fine because when these things come upon us, that's a great opportunity for our faith to grow and for us to grow. And how about Shema Shai? Matter of fact, to speak on that in the book of James. All right. Uh, what is it, James 5 and 11? 
this is the book of James, chapter 5, verse 11. Uh, let me get the NLT. Mm. No, that's not it. Let me find it right quick. Yeah, just the book of James, chapter 1, uh, verse 3 in the NLT. This is the book of James, chapter 1, start of verse 2. It says, the heading of it is faith and endurance. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, you know. So when your faith is tested, your endurance have a chance to grow, man. All right. When your faith is tested, I'm going to say it again. Your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete and needing nothing. Right. And, and, to, and to endure, you know, means to be able to suffer. <clears throat> and that's ultimately what we were brought into this truth to do. Suffer for our iniquity, suffer for our, you know, transgressions against Yahweh by Shema Shai. So when these things are brought upon us, we must consider it joy that our faith has a chance to grow. And when in the moment, it doesn't feel good. In the moment, you stress, you're panicking. But you got to understand, man, the Lord brought you to the situation. He can also get you through it. This is the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 2. And verse 2 in, a, in a GNT again, it says, be sincere and determined. Keep calm when trouble comes. Stay with the Lord, never abandon him, and you will be prosperous at the end of your days. Accept whatever happens to you, even if you suffer humiliation. Be patient, all right? Even if you suffer humiliation, we must be patient. Uh, a great example of humiliation is our Lord Yahweh Shah. All right, look at the humiliation that he was put through, being the king of kings, you know? And I like to say this a lot because it's a heavy point to, to my spirit, <clears throat> We suffer humiliation, and, you know, we don't know if we are the elect. We don't know if, the, yeah, you know, if we're of that precious oak, all right? But our Lord, Yahweh Shai, he suffered that humiliation knowing who he was. He suffered that humiliation knowing that he was the son of the Most High, knowing that he was the king of the Jews, knowing that, you know, he was the uh, rightful ruler of the planet Earth. He knew these things, but he still suffered that humiliation patiently, okay? So that's a great example for us today, brothers, when we suffer humiliation you know, in, 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 in most parts, we deserve it. But Yahweh Shai, he didn't deserve his humiliation. So that's a great example for us today. It says, gold is tested by fire and human character is tested in the furnace of humiliation. You know, gold is tested by fire and human character is tested in the furnace of humiliation. Yeah, your character is tested. You know, sometimes you got to suffer some humility. Sometimes you got to suffer, you know, out the situation the Lord put you in. Sometimes you got to suffer that, man. We got to suffer that. <clears throat> Scripture says you have heard of the patience of Job. Hey, Job was humiliated. Look at, you know, what he went through with his friends. You know, he didn't do no wrong, you know. But the Lord still put him through that process. And he didn't understand why he was going through that process. But it was for us today, man. All right. There wouldn't be a book of Job if he didn't suffer that humiliation. They want to be a book of Job if he <clears throat> cursed the Most High, if he gave up. He could have said, not nah, F this, Lord. You know, I ain't do nothing wrong. I don't deserve this. Nothing. Blah, blah, blah. You know, the Lord just took him out of the game. But now nah, he suffered it and he hoped in Yahweh by Shema Shai, though he was going through the process of what he was going through. <clears throat> Let's grab it right quick. This is the book of Job, chapter uh, 13 and verse 5 in the NLT. Um, no, I'm just getting KJV. I don't like the NLT. This is the book of Job 13 to verse 15. It says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. You know, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. The Lord may destroy your character, you know, to build it back up. The Lord may destroy you. You know, to uh, to build you back up. You look at a potter's vessel. You know, when a potter is molding the clay, a lot of times they 
you see the potter build up the form of the clay and they'll break it back down because they don't like that they don't like that you know that form so they'll break it down and they'll build it back up again they'll break it down and they'll build it back up again and that's constantly what we're going through in this process man we're constantly being broken down and built back up we're constantly being broken down and built back up <clears throat> through the furnace of affliction Salakia, through the furnace of affliction through the process of humility all right <clears throat> it reads um it says uh starting in verse four again Sirach chapter two and verse four in the gnt also known as ecclesiasticus except whatever happens to you even if you suffer humiliation gold is tested by fire and human character is tested in the furnace of humiliation trust in the lord and he will help you walk straight in his ways and put your hope in him all right you got to put your hope in your how about shim shy and none else okay it says all you that fear the lord wait for him to show you his mercy do not turn away from him or you will fall right you gotta you know wait for the lord to show you mercy you know the lord ain't gonna be angry with us forever he may jack us up for a season but in scripture say what the lord is merciful all right we, we serve a merciful power <clears throat> and also we serve a power of judgment you know so the lord judge you but then he will turn around and have mercy upon you so you have to wait for the mercy man it says uh all you that fear the lord trust in him and you will certainly be rewarded okay all you that fear the lord trust him and you will certainly be rewarded right scripture says you have heard of the patience of job and that you've seen the end of job okay that the most high had mercy roughly paraphrasing matter of fact i'm going to just grab it for edification's sake because this is this is a topic that's been on my spirit man that's the topic of endurance all right, because we're in a race. You're going to have to endure certain things. You're going to go through certain things, and you're going to have to endure it. Uh, let's grab this. This is the book of James, chapter 5, and verse 11. That's the spirit I grabbed it earlier. James, chapter 5, and verse 11 <clears throat> in the NLT. <clears throat> and it reads, it says, <clears throat> Salakia. I got the cotton mouth. It says, uh, Let's find it somewhere else. All right, here we go. James chapter 5 in verse 11. We give great honor to those who endure under sufferings. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. All right. So it says, you can see that the Lord was full of tenderness and mercy towards the latter end of Job. All right. Scripture says the Lord uh, blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. All right. So we're on a process of, 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 of being broken down and being built back up. You have to consider your latter end. What you do in that process is going to define who you are. What you do when you're tested is going to define who you are. All right, what you do in your, in your process of humiliation, because we all going through the suffering, we all going through the fire, but it's what you do when you're in the fire. It's going to define who you are. Are you going to uh, break down or are you going to, you know, trust in the Lord to, to build you up? It says, uh, trust the Lord and he will help you walk straight in his ways and put your hope in him. All you that fear the Lord do wait for him to show you his mercy. Do not turn away from him. Or you will fall. All you that fear the Lord, trust in him and you will certainly be rewarded. All you that fear the Lord, look forward to his blessings of mercy and eternal happiness. All right. Look forward to his blessings of mercy and eternal happiness. Yeah, you got to look forward to the blessings, man. You got to look forward to uh, the latter end of your situation. You can't just be so stuck on the now. You can't be so stuck on why am I going through this? What's what's going on? Why you got to look forward to what's the end result of this? All right, I know I'm going through it, but now what what is the end result of the process I'm going through? What 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 is the Lord ultimately going to do? Okay, it says think back to the ancient generations and consider this: Has the Lord ever disappointed anyone who put his hope in Him? Has the Lord ever abandoned anyone who held Him in constant reverence? Has the Lord ever ignored anyone who prayed to him? The Lord is kind and merciful. He forgives our sins and keep us safe in time of trouble. But those who lose their nerves are doomed. All those sinners who try to have it both ways, 
Doom is sure to come for those who lose their courage. They have no faith, and so they will not have so and so they will have no protection. Doom is sure to come for those who lose their hope. What will they do when the Lord comes to judge them? You see? So we wanna, you know, we don't want to be of those who lose courage and lose hope and lose faith. We gotta yeah, scripture says, uh Let's grab this right quick. It's the book of Sirach at the 14th verse 2. It says, Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. You see? So you don't want to fall from your hope in the Lord when you're going through certain things. Like, oh, man, the Lord just forgot about me. Man, the Lord turned his back on me. Man, the Lord just... Nah, man, you, you, you in a process right now, bro. All of our forefathers felt that way. Yahweh Shai, King David... The Lord said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And the Lord was with him the whole time. But it's what you do in that moment. It's what you do in that process of feeling those type of ways. Feeling forsaken. Feeling like, damn, what, what, what did I do? You know, well, I've been serving you, Lord. What happened? All right? It's, it's what do you do in those moments that defines who you are in the latter end, man. And we want to have a honor in our latter end. <clears throat> so you got to suffer that situation out. All right. So, you know, yeah, man, this is a quick lesson through the spirit. You know, I pray it was edifying. I don't want to go on and on and on and be the dead horse. I don't want to go on and on and on and be the dead horse. But uh, <clears throat> I pray it was edifying. I pray it was uplifting to the elect. I'm going to close out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shema Oshai, Ba'ashem, Rechah, Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Mills and teaching real well once again. Until the next time I do say shalom.